By the time I was six years old, I had flown into space numerous times, fought the terrors of the seas, and even traveled to the Earth's center. Of course, I did all this while seated at my local movie theater, and even now, I still enjoy each science fiction based adventure. So, sit back and watch my five sci fi gems of the 1950s. Number five. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Directed by Richard Fleischer and starring Kirk Douglas, James Mason, Peter Lohr, and Paul Lucas. A sea monster is attacking and sinking ships in the Pacific Ocean. A scientist, his assistant, and a professional harpooner set out to stop the monster, but found instead the technologically advanced submarine, the Nautilus, and Captain Nemo, who runs the craft. Really? I said Captain Nemo. The three heroes discover that the captain not only explores the wonders and mysteries beneath the ocean surface, but his quest is to sink all ships of war. Collision speed, full! Because his maniacal obsession holds no sympathy for the crew of any other nautical craft, the heroic three must stop this dangerous torpedo boat. all the power of the Nautilus and his crew is tested when a giant squid believes they might be its next meal. Number 4. Conquest of Space. Directed by Byron Haskin and starring Eric Fleming, Walter Brook, Mickey Shaughnessy, Phil Foster, Ross Martin, Benson Fong, and William Redfield. The Supreme International Space Authority is about to launch a complex journey into outer space. But I have a few questions. First, after a year of constructing a craft to get to the moon, the team completes a winged spaceship. Uh, there's no air or wind on the moon? Why is everyone surprised when the Supreme Leaders suddenly change the mission to the planet Mars? Second, what kind of space force allows the captain's son to become his second in command? You belong here, Barney. You're my son. Space is your heritage. Third, The captain is physically sick during the life and death mission, but why isn't anyone concerned when the captain also starts to lose his marbles? We can't. We haven't the right. How will the perturbed crew survive its leadership? Let's ask what they think. Number three, It Came From Beneath the Sea. Directed by Robert Gordon and starring Kenneth Toby, Faith Demure, Dan Maddox Jr., and Chuck Griffiths. An atomic submarine commander and his crew are brought to a dead stop by an unknown force before they finally break free. Later, with the assistance of two scientists, the answer is a great irradiated octopus. The beast lived at the bottom of the sea and awoke because of the nearby nuclear testing. We take an enormous number of those to disable a Navy submarine. Or just one of enormous size, Mr. Chase. Because of the radiation, the eight-legged creature developed an appetite for large animals and people in particular. (laughs) 
watch out, it reached the city and it's going to eat everything in its path. Number two, Tarantula. Directed by Jack Arnold and starring John Ager, Leo G. Carroll, Mara Corday, and Nestor Paiva. A renowned scientist creates a serum that causes animals to grow rapidly and then beyond. Unfortunately, one of his lab assistants experimented on himself with the formula and wanted to return the favor to the professor. During the fight, a giant tarantula escaped. As it grew, so did its hunger. The enormous crawler was the first thing that made me uncomfortable. And the second was the changes that the poor scientists went through. We're ready for the ultimate test on humans. Do you please explain why you brought him here? But none of this made me feel as creepy as the busy town doctor who kept finding excuses to drive the scientist's new assistant to work every day. Oh, he won't mind. No, I'd be glad to drive you. Well, if you're sure. I think it's about time. Find out for some more fishing. It's been four or five weeks since. Excuse me, Jim. Steve. I've never seen anything quite like it. Can we stop? Sure. But I certainly enjoyed it. Give my best to the rabbits. Would you like to see them? So it only made sense when the tarantula became jealous and he also dropped by the house to pick up the young lady. Number one, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Directed by Henry Levin and starring James Mason, Pat Boone, Arlene Dahl, Peter Ronson, Dane Baker, and Thayer David. Another sci-fi adventure Jules Verne wrote in the 1880s was Journey to the Center of the Earth. A geologist, his student, a guide, and a scientist's widow find their way into a volcano in Iceland. Following the clues left by a missing explorer, the group moves ever deeper through the treacherous terrain. This rolling rock scene reminds me of a movie I've seen before, but I can't quite remember which one. And when their day couldn't get worse, a rival scientist hoping to snatch the credit of their discoveries follows the brave team. In addition, they deal with flooded caves, underground whirlpools, and the discovery that hungry prehistoric creatures still exist at the center of the earth. Thanks for the watch. Let me know your favorite movies from the 1950s in the comments below and check out my other sci-fi and horror videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give a like, and explore my many other endless perceptions.